start. Hello students, I am back with the concept in a minute's article and today I am going to discuss about a Sommerfeld model and the Sommerfeld model is also sometimes known as a Bohr Sommerfeld uh, model. The reason the Bohr, Neil Bohr was quick to adopt to this idea which could actually challenge his postulates. Now, so, uh, Neil Bohr had told us about the circular orbits only for the electrons around the nucleus but then since the model is analogous to the planetary model and in the planetary model we see that there is supposed to be the existence of the circular orbits given by the Copernicus and Newton and also the elliptical orbits suggested by the Kepler. In the same mannerism when it is an analogous model. So the questions have to be raised that why the electrons cannot participate in the elliptical orbits. This idea was limited reason because the whole idea of the Niels Bohr was based upon the principal quantum number. So it took the brilliance of Sommerfeld to introduce another quantum number which could be named as a secondary quantum number or something else. He named it as an azimuthal quantum number and based upon this particular quantum number he was able to explain the existence of the elliptical orbits also. So let me throw the light on it by a quick short example. This idea of the Sommerfeld was also based upon his free electron theory in which he suggested that the electrons which we will also believe upon us that is attracted by the nucleus of course that was done by the Rutherford and Bohr also and also it is getting repelled by the other fellow electrons over there present there also. Do remember that Neil Bohr theory was only for the single electron model and this particular model is based upon the free electron model and of course later on Sommerfeld also explained that the positive force because the positive attractive force because of the nucleus is kind of a uniform of all on the electrons nearby which it should not be because the distances are different and the second the mutual repulsion between the electrons can be neglected of course we, we do understand that part okay so how the existence of the elliptical orbits are there that is too simple that is a ratio of the major axis upon the minor axis of the elliptical orbit is taken as equal to n upon k where we know n what is n n is supposed to be the principal quantum number right and the k over here is supposed to be the azimuthal quantum number that is an azimuthal quantum number right and the values for this particular k lies between that is exactly less than equal to n right of course cannot cross n because major axis cannot be more than the minor axis right so the minor axis cannot be more than major axis correction now the n n let's take a value right so let's decide the n value as 4 as in this particular illustrated figure over here so if n is supposed to be equal to 4 then the possible values for the k will be will be 4 3 2 and 1 right so let's start with k equal to 1 so if i pick up the value for the k as equal to 1 over here so what do i give uh, what do i reveal from here that the major axis that's a major axis upon the minor axis n value is how much that is 4 k value becomes 1 so that's 4 so major axis is 4 times a minor axis so it will be a very flattened ellipse like this this is a very flattened ellipse like this this one so for this we have n equal to 4 and k equal to 1 so it is kind of a flattened ellipse right and if you want to improve upon the ratio over here so let's pick up the value for the k equal to 2 over there so pick up the value for the k equal to 2 so that major axis upon the minor axis that becomes equal to 4 is to 2 that becomes 2 upon 1 it's exactly as 4 upon 2 the k value is 2 and n value is 4 so that 2 is to 1 so now now that uh, flattened behavior starts to improve and now I'm going to get this as the blue one over here that is n equal to 4 k equal to 2 further improvement if you take n equal to 4 k n equal to 4 is fixed k equal to 3 then what happens finally if I take the value for the k equal to 4 
If I take the value for k equal to 4, in that condition n is already 4. So you get a major axis and minor axis. Major axis upon minor axis, that is basically what twice of b upon twice of a in the terms of the elliptical behavior, twice of a upon twice of b. Right? That's twice of a upon twice of b. So that's basically a upon b, where a is supposed to be the length of the semi major axis, b as the length of the semi minor axis. And also the eccentricity. What is that? That is 1 minus of b square upon a square. So that is b upon a. That is k upon n. So you can also write this is equal to 1 minus of instead of b square upon a square as k square upon n square. So as the value for the k grows, the eccentricity decreases. So when does it vanishes? When the value for the k becomes equal to 1 and it becomes 0 and it becomes a circular orbit. So for n equal to 4 and k equal to 4, that means the k value becomes equal to 1, we get the orbit as what? Circular. So that means, hence it is known as a bohr sommerfeld model, reason because it actually explains to you the elliptical orbit's existence also and also explains the existence of the circular orbit also. Further a thing to add. For every defined orbit, which is, has to be a stationary state, has to be stable, it must have a fixed energy. So if for n equal to 4, we are defining three extra orbits. Like these are the three extra orbits. For the principal quantum number 4, that means it will talk about three extra energy states closer to n equal to 4. And similarly, when you will be talking about n equal to 3, so there will be two extra energy states. When you talk about n equal to 2, there will be one extra energy state. So which is the safer mode? The safer mode is n equal to 1. Because at n equal to 1, you cannot have a further division. That's the reason the Neil Bohr theory moreover talks about the Lyman transitions and moreover it talks about the ground state of hydrogen atom. So it plays safe. So while you move on to the higher quantum number states, you will have the splitting of the energy levels. So hopefully you have understood well about the sommerfeld bohr model and that's an improvement in the Neil Bohr model. So I will be coming up more stuff in the next one for the time being is uh, bye for now, right, for the concept in minutes. Thank you.